This over here is the fastest gaming CPU in the world. But here's the thing, I couldn't care less about gaming. Regardless, there are some gamers out there who actually do some real work during the day. So how does this gaming CPU actually compare to the previous generation? Is it actually worth buying? Well, I'm glad you asked, because that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com and if you use the code TN20 you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key and paste it to the activation settings and you're all done. Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. By the way, I want to start with pricing because that puts us in a very interesting pickle because if you look at the price of the 9800X 3D, the best gaming CPU in the world right now, it's rather expensive. What I want to know is how does it compare to the previous generation 7800 x 3d to put two other cpus in the mix i want to know how good is it compared to something that we can get from amd that's perhaps not an x 3d cpu for the same price what else can we get which is the 9950x in fact right now at the time of me making this video some of the 9800x 3d listings are more expensive than the 9950x with double the cores and double the threads so is it worth actually paying for this gaming cpu or should you just go with the top of the line amd cpu and the fourth guy in this mix is intel obviously because we've got to get something from the team blue as well i chose the 14900k with the price of 433 dollars this guy is the cheapest out of this bunch here and you're thinking why are you comparing it to 14900k this core ultra out there you should be comparing it this well actually the core ultra launch was kind of insignificant and i'm retesting the guys at the moment so if you want to see that you know, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already because videos like these are coming out. But this 14900K is actually a really, really good creator CPU. I recently built the 14900K editing system. It's working fine, not a single issue, never crashed. I can't fault the guy. This puts an interesting wrench through all of this work because it's very, very affordable compared to the other guys there. So check out the latest pricing in the video description below. And if you do want to build yourself the best bang for buck, create a PC, then there's some build guys in the video description below as always completely free you check the one that's closest to your budget and enjoy building something amazing for you so then in terms of specs i'm gonna skip the 4900k and 9950x if you haven't seen the 9950x review go check that one out we're focusing on the 9800x 3d what's actually changed so it's a 8 core and 16 thread cpu it boosts to 5.2 gigahertz which is a 200 megahertz increase from the previous generation and the base frequency is 4.7 gigahertz which is 500 megahertz increase the biggest thing here what you see difference to the other cpus is the actual cache we've got 96 megabytes of cache which is a lot more than the other cpus the 7800x 3d has got the same amount of cache but it hasn't actually changed in terms of the power draw it's the same as 7800X 3D, and we're gonna talk about the power draw later on in this video. It's the same process node, and go check out the price in the video description below. In terms of the test bench setup, for the AMD, I'm using the X870E Pro Watt Creator Wi-Fi for the motherboard. We're using 64 gigabytes of DDR5 Kingston Fury Beast, and I'm running this at 5600 megatransfers per second. In a minute, you'll understand why. I'm using a 360 millimeter AIO Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut for the thermal paste, Samsung 980, Pro as the drive and an RTX 1490 for the GPU. On Intel side, I'm using the ASRock Z790 Nova Wi Fi for the motherboard. I'm using same RAM, exactly the same configuration, 5600 megatransfers per second, because that's the official spec. RTX 1490, same drives for the operating system and cooling. So they're very identical to everything. You might have seen the actual memory controller spec and you're thinking, why 5600 megatransfers per second? It's very slow. Well, that's the official spec provided by AMD on their homepage. The same with Intel 14900K is exactly the basic what they're saying. Now, yes, you can go faster, but technically we're going out of factory spec. It's called overclocking and uh, 
you know, you avoid the warranty if you do that. But don't worry, really, if anything happens, it becomes unstable, you can lower the frequency and still go for it. I want to test them at the factory stock settings rather than overtuned settings. Interestingly, AMD and Intel, both of them, when sending out review units, recommend you to use the RAM that's higher than their recommended stock settings. I wonder why. Let's take a look at the Cinebench R24. Our 9800X 3D is the base, and then we'll see all the other CPUs compared. The previous generation is 14 to 19% slower in single and multi-core scores, so quite an okay boost from previous generation. But the 9950X is about 5% roughly faster in single core score, and about 70% faster in the multi-core score. 4900K is about 6% faster in the single core score, and about 44% faster in the multi-core score. Geekman 6, we're seeing similar stories. The 7800X3D is about 10 to 11% slower in the single and multi core scores. 9950X here is 10% faster in the single core score and roughly about 23 percent faster in the multi-core score. Intel is roughly 4% faster in single core score and 26.3% faster in the multi-core score. So looks like the 4900K is faster in single and multi-core scores, but that is not everything. Looking at Adobe Photoshop, the 7800X 3D is about 15 percent slower in the overall score and general and filter score really the 9950x is about 1.5 percent faster which is actually really impressive performance from the 9800x 3d the 3dv cache here in photoshop really makes the difference and 4900k is about 15 percent slower in overall score and about 20 percent slower in the filter score so amd is killing it here on adobe photoshop tables of turn interestingly it really impresses me how well the 9800x 3d performs in photo editing applications that being said let's move on to lightroom classic the 7800x 3d is about 20 percent slower in the overall score passive score is about 25 percent slower now the 9950x is actually 2% slower. The 9800X 3D is faster than the 9950X. That's incredible. In fact, in terms of eight core CPUs, this 9800X 3D is doing amazing in photo editing. It really performs essentially within margin of error of the 16 core 9950X Ryzen counterpart. Now, 4900K actually is still faster in this application. For some reason, Lightroom Classic likes that one more and the CPU performs better there. I'm still really impressed with the 9800X 3D and if you're doing photo editing, it really shines here. Let's move on to video editing. In Adobe Premiere Pro, the previous generation is over 10% slower, really. Some of the scores like IntraFrame is about 15% slower. So not a bad increase between generations, but for the same price, 9950X is about 9% faster in the extended overall score and about 6.6 .6 in the standard overall score. The long GOP score and the interframe score can be up to 22% faster, which kind of makes you question, should you get the X3D or something else for the same money? 4900K here is the fastest of them all. So if you're doing video editing, that one really shines here. About 14% faster than the 9800X 3D and still faster than the 9950 X. Moving into After Effects and the 7800X 3D is about 14 to 15% slower. Multicore score is 38% slower. 9950X is about 10% faster. Interestingly, even 4900K is faster. The 9950X here really, really shines. For After Effects, it's one of the best prosumer CPUs you can get. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve and the 7800X 3D is about 5% slower in the basic standard and extended overall scores. Some of the scores go a little bit more than that like Interframe is about 12-13% slower, less than the single digits really slower the new generation. The 9950X here really really shines. Interestingly Intel and the 9950X are within 1% of each other. Really no difference in there. In certain aspects, like the long GOP score is still the fastest on Intel. So concluding video editing, as you can see, the 9800X 3D isn't shining as much as the 9950X. Perhaps going with a higher core count or previous generation might make more sense just because the improvement in video editing 
isn't as big as in some of the other applications. Let's take a look at 3D. We've got Blender here and you can see the previous generation is about 9% slower in Monster Scene, about 20% slower in Junction Scene and about 13% slower in the Classroom Scene. That's a very healthy increase from the previous generation. That being said, the 9950X is literally 100% faster, double the performance of what we have here as the fastest gaming CPU. 87.7% faster in Junction Scene and 96%. Literally going from eight cores to 16 cores, we're getting double the performance. It is twice for 3D. That really scales really, really well. 4900K is faster than the Ryzen. The 9950X takes 3D rendering on a whole other level. So Intel really hasn't got a chance in there. In V-Ray, the 7800X 3D is 20% slower, 9950X is 77% faster, and the 4900K about 30.7% faster. So in 3D, the 7800X 3D, it doesn't really make sense in terms of the price point, is impressive compared to the previous generation, but if you really want something good for 3D, you go with the 9950X, for the ultimate performance, the best bang for buck might actually lie with the 14900K. Let's talk about the power consumption because the new chip is pulling roughly around 150 watts when I'm doing Cinebench. The previous generation 7800X 3D was pulling roughly around 90 watts. That is quite a big increase in power draw. Now that's with our PBO. You can enable PBO and let it draw a bit more. It's considerably increased. 9950X 200 watts and the 14900K 253 watts. The 14900K is the hardest one to cool in here. Any of these Ryzen other chips, they're completely fine and much easier to cool down. So if you're looking for cooling and power efficiency, Ryzen is the one to go at full utilization. I did notice one thing when testing and what I've always noticed is that when you are on idle or very low threaded tasks, then Intel seems to be idling at lower temperatures or wattages than AMD. So overall conclusion, is the best gaming CPU actually worth it? Only if you do gaming. For creators, it doesn't make that much sense unless you want very, very good Photoshop performance. As you can see in Photoshop, it's amazing. One of the best CPUs you can get and within margin of error of the best other AMD CPU. The problem is the price point. If the price point was lower, it would be more appealing because it's priced so high the 9950X seems to be just a better option for your money. In all of the other applications, it outperforms the 9800X 3D and is generally just better in every aspect. The previous generation, if you go with the 7950X, for example, you could get a better performance and a lower price point. In terms of best bank for buck, the Intel one seems to be shining here. It's $130 roughly, maybe even more cheaper per CPU, Plus the motherboard's gonna be cheaper. So if you want the best bank for buck performer here for the same kind of money, Intel looks to be very, very interesting here. I'd say apart from 3D for photo and video editing, Intel is the one to go for. And if you wanna know which best bank for buck create PC to build, there's build guides in the description below, go check them out. But here's another little wrench in this cog system. If you pair these CPUs with an RTX 5090 or 50 series CPUs, actually Intel has less of an edge over the AMD because we get very good codec support from all of these CPUs because of the GPU. The software is not supported at the time of me making this video. So we're gonna have to wait till that rolls out and then we're gonna have to test it all again. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.